Okay. Uh, I'm going to read to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Piper, the allegations against you. Uh, the violations are violation of Rule 4 on or about November the 24th of 2021. You did commit the act of domestic abuse violence, domestic abuse involving strangulation and domestic abuse victim who was pregnant. This is evident by your arrest of November the 24th, 2021 by the New Orleans Police Department. On January 19th of 2022, under Orleans Magistrate number 595327, the charges were refused. Uh, how do you plead to that allegation? Not guilty. And uh, number 10, you have failed to make payment on 414 of 2021, and you are currently $441 in arrears. How do you plead to that? Guilty. Okay. Uh, your case was assigned to Ms. Jackson. She's going to be asking you a few questions. Would you please answer any questions she may have? Yes, sir. All right. Good morning, Mr. Piper. Good morning. Uh, you're on parole for a second degree robbery. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And I show that your full term date is June 27th of this year. Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the domestic abuse battery on a pregnant victim that you were arrested for on November 21st of 21. And I assume you have been incarcerated on a parole hold since November 24th of 21. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, tell us what happened um, in, in this situation. Um, me and my girl, we wound up getting into an argument. She wound up putting her hands on me, and I kept telling her to stop, and I wound up pushing her away. Is that the only thing that happened? Yes, ma'am. How did uh, Shakira, uh, Sharika, uh, get involved from next door? She was knocking on the door. Wow, we was because uh, she she heard us arguing. And she, it, the court said that she heard screaming and sound was consistent that was consistent with being somebody being struck. That's not true, ma'am. Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you. I know that Miss um, Asia has requested that the charges be dismissed, but that doesn't necessarily determine how we view the case. Uh, and I know that the DA refused the charges, um, but they did, the police did write a very detailed report about the incident uh, where you were uh, making some derogatory comments uh, to uh, Geisha. Uh, she asked you were leave. Uh, she became concerned because you were so angry and agitated. So she said she pushed you away with two open hands. And then that's when you were crushed her, you were cursing at her, uh, uh, grabbed her by the neck with both your hands and started squeezing. Uh, he pulled you to her to the rear of the residence and that they were, while y'all were in the rear room, you continued to squeeze her while she was uh, trying to resist as much as possible. Uh, so um, that's what, you know, that's what she told the police, um, Mr. Biden. That's not true, ma'am. We got into an argument. She was trying to sit there. She got mad about something that I said. And that's all it was. Me and her was talking about something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but oh, she, oh, you know. the neck. Ma'am, say that again. I said the police photographed her neck because they saw marks on her neck consistent with someone having been choked. I didn't choke her, ma'am. I wound up grabbing her by her neck and I pushed her away. My hands had like a buku dry skin marks on it. That's all it was. It wasn't me choking her out. Marty, uh, let, me, let me just explain something to you. Uh, Miss 
you know, honesty goes a lot further with me. I'm not, I'm not lying, man. I'm like my hands, I do yard work too. You could ask her, I wind up, my hands have buku calluses on it. That's why. That's your story. I'll, I'll let you stick with your story. What about your uh, supervision fees? Apparently you've not paid any supervision fees since uh, April of 2021. I had a I had a support team that was supposedly, you know, paying for my my supervision fees that you use for restorative justice. Um, say that again. You use for restorative justice. They was paying for my supervision fees. Well, they didn't pay. Nobody paid anything since April of last year. That's because I haven't talked to them in a little minute. Well, okay. You can't tell me one breath that they're paying for you and then in the net another breath you're not paying because you haven't been in communication with them. Those say two that things again, ma'am. Say okay. that again. Okay. Mr. Pineson. The report says no supervision fees paid since April of twenty twenty one. You said your support team was supposed to be paying those fees for you. Yes, ma'am. And I said, well, there have been no fees paid. And then you said that's because you haven't been in touch with them for a little minute. Which yeah. means that the reason that they're not paying is because you haven't been working with them or communicating with them to get your fees. Hey. They supposedly was only paying my fees for a little minute until I was supposed to get back on my feet. That's why. Hey, but they supposed, that's why they're a support team. They're supposed okay. to help me until I get back on my feet. Okay. Hey, let me just let me just kind of rewind what you just said. Who's on flow? Me. Whose responsibility is it? It was hard for me, ma'am. Like to be honest, I was when I first came out of jail, I didn't have nothing. I was home. Sir, stop talking. Whose responsibility is it? I guess mine, ma'am. No, I guess it is yours. And because there was an organization that was willing to help you, that doesn't shift the responsibility to them away from you. Because they don't have to help you. You're the one on parole, and it's your responsibility. But I was homeless, ma'am. Like, how can I pay for something that I can't pay for if I'm homeless? I was homeless when I first came out of jail. When did you stop being homeless, sir? When did I stop being homeless? I stopped being homeless like a couple months. I started staying in the, uh, the VOA Volunteers of America. That was last year on the, like, I think around the fourth month. Okay, so from April of 21... Until what date? When did you stop living? I, I don't. I can't remember. I know I wound up getting the. I wound up getting a spot at the VOA. A uh, uh, a spot to where I can stay at. It's a room. You pay fifty dollars a month, and they was helping okay. me. To, they, I had a case manager that was helping me with that. Okay. Uh, were you living at the Volunteers of America? Thirty nine oh one Two Lane Avenue, ma'am. Uh, please listen before uh, you talk. Where were you living on November 24th of 2021? I was living in a reentry program. What reentry program? I think uh, Eternal Crisis or something. I mean, no, Reaping the Harvest in the Nine Wall. Do you know how long you've been staying there? I didn't stay there that long because I didn't, you know, I wasn't fitted for the program. I wound up leaving. And where did you go? I became homeless. Well, were you living with Yasha? No, I wasn't living with her around the time. No, you talking about this year or last year? Again, you got arrested November 24th 
my res my residence was November, my residence was 3901 Two Lane Avenue, but I was currently staying with her too. I was staying at my place and I was staying with Geisha. Uh, my question, were you living with Geisha when you got arrested in November of last year? Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Had you been employed since getting out of jail? Say that again, ma'am. What kind of job did you have after you got out of jail? I had a $15 hour job that I was working with a landscaping business called Gulf Coast Synthetic Turf, but I didn't keep it that long. I wanted the boss was kind of, you know, he was supposedly always fussing and always angry and I didn't keep the job that long. Wow, everything is somebody else's fault. No, the man was kind of racist, not trying to, you know, say that he was racist. He wound up getting into an argument with me and he said something that he shouldn't have said. And I didn't like it and I wound up quitting the job. I didn't, you know, I didn't oh, stay the job too long. I only had the job for two weeks. Okay. And so you didn't pay any fees because you weren't working, is that correct? Say that again, ma'am. Didn't pay fees because you weren't working, correct? Yes, ma'am. Weren't working because you chose to quit a job. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What is your diagnosis? Uh, I have I have PTSD, bipolar depression, ADHD, and that's all. And why do you have PTSD? Because I have trauma from when I was a kid. I used to get beat by my mom. I've been through foster care and everything. I aged out at the age of 18. So what's your plan going forward? Um, I have a daughter that my my uh that Geisha is pretty much about to deliver today. I was hoping that if I do get out that I can get a job and be able to support my daughter and you know better myself as far as a young man and seek anger management and uh and domestic abuse, you know, whatever I can do to be able to better myself. Well, those are, are lofty goals, and I hope you um, meet those goals, but you're only on parole until June 27th of this month. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Piper, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before we turn it over to your lawyer? Um, yes, sir. I was just hoping that y'all can just see, you know, Nina see on me. I've been staying out of trouble for almost a year since I've been on parole. I've been trying to make myself a better person. But from the last time I went to jail, I'm not a bad person. I just been through a little bit of ups and downs. Um, I'm really pretty much innocent in this situation. You know, I didn't try to harm my girl. She has a, a daughter that's supposed to be bearing that she's supposed to deliver today. I'm just hoping that y'all can see clean and sound. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Statlander, if you would like to close, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I have spoken. I've been representing Mr. Piper since his arrest uh, back in uh, November of this past year, 2021. Um, and I think you all's uh, records are correct. The state did uh, dismiss or, excuse me, refuse these charges in January of this year. Uh, and I do understand the the, the board's um, consideration or uh, how they handle the the district attorney's refusals. But in this case, uh, this was not a uh, unparticipating uh, complaining witness. This was a, a complaining witness that that came to the district attorney to uh, my office and has made several statements to uh, probation and parole, which I hope uh, you have, uh, which which uh, she always sought to clear up the record. And um, I do, I, I listen to the same statement that Mr. Piper um, uh, gave uh, to you just a moment ago. And, and I, I, do, I do understand some of the, what I imagine hesitancies you have uh, in Mr. Piper's not taking responsibility for this, for this action. 
Um, but I do want to, to try to clear up that. It's because the representation of the facts as they were given to the police at the time of the incident are inaccurate as to what happened at that time uh, once temperatures had cooled and Miss uh, Sheldon had been given an opportunity to accurately reflect on what happened. I have a statement which I, I did submit this morning, however, it was late. Uh, and I would like to read it to you. This is from Miss Sheldon, um, and it was taken. She, she's given several statements. All of them are, are basically the same, um, but this is the most recent, and it was given to me uh, two days ago, so on the 7th uh, at her home, the 637 South Pierce Apartment C. Uh, it was made by Geisha Sheldon. It was uh, transcribed by uh, a woman in our office, Catherine Stromquist, who acted as witness. It says, uh, my name is Geisha Sheldon. I live at 637 South Pierce Street. Rashad Piper is the father of my new baby, Serenity. I met him because he lives nearby and is friends with a woman who lives in my building. We had been dating for about six months when he got arrested. What happened between us was all my fault. He was at my house and we were arguing. I didn't want to be bothered. He wanted to talk and would not give me space. We were, we were fighting and I lashed out. I bit him in the face and I punched him. He was on the phone at the time. He dropped the phone and put his hands on my neck. He was trying to hold me back. I wasn't hurt. When the police came, they tried to take, or excuse me, they wanted to take both of us to jail. I know he really cares about me. He's been in jail this whole time. I've been pregnant. I want this situation over with. I don't want him to do any more time. Our daughter is Rashad's first child. I know he can't wait to see her. He's a big help to me when he's here. And it's signed Miss Geisha Sheldon and dated uh, the 7th of this month. This statement is accurate with the other statements that Ms. Sheldon has given outside of the fact that she gave a statement that was uh, somewhat different um, on, the, um, on the date of the incident. Mr. Piper acknowledged in, in his statement to you all that he did put his hands on her neck. However, I think the big difference was the purpose for, those, for her hands being on, it, uh, on her neck. He was trying to push her away. He was uh, in a defensive posture after he had been bitten and hit himself. Certainly there was screaming. Certainly there was um, uh, loud noises, um, which is the reason why his neighbor did come over. All of that is true. Um, Mr. Piper has been in jail since November, about seven months now, uh, and has had the time to reflect on those, those actions and those incidents. We've had multiple conversations, uh, and I'm not a therapist. I'm certainly not a specialist in, in domestic abuse training. But we have had multiple conversations about the best way to have handled that situation. He knows that the best way he should have handled that situation was to walk out the door. He knows that. Ms. Sheldon also has had multiple conversations with our office as well as the, the resources, uh, client services department that we have. And she understands that if Rashad wouldn't have left, she could have left. Um, there was the stress of, of dealing with <laughs> pregnancy, uh, poverty, um, and then living on top of each other in a very small apartment. I could not imagine. I've been married for six years. My wife and I never fight. We would have fights if we lived in those situations. Um, the difference, I think, is, is that my wife and I have, have had the skills to walk out of those situations when we get into them. Mr. Piper has not been given those those skills. And I think he can get those skills. He can learn those skills and he can um, become someone who put, if put in the situation again, would be able to respond properly and in a, in a way that is not at all physical and doesn't involve the police or, or, or the safety of, and maintains the safety of both him and his, uh, his partner. Ms. Sheldon uh, wants to maintain a relationship with Mr. Piper. Mr. Piper told you something today um, that, that he has a baby that's about to be born. Mr. Piper is learning right now that his baby is actually born. She was born two weeks ago, Rashad. Um, she's gorgeous. She's tiny. I saw her. Um, he has been talking to me and continues to talk to me about uh, being with his daughter every time I speak to him. He's going to have that opportunity uh, whenever he gets out, whether it's 
you know, if whether regardless of, of, of the board's uh, decision, he will get an opportunity to be with his daughter and to be a good father. And I know he will. I'm asking and Rashad is asking that he have that opportunity sooner rather than later. Um, his full term date is uh, only 18 days away. Uh, however, Mr. Piper wants every day, every minute, every second with his daughter. And we would ask you to please uh, allow, recommend um, that Mr. Piper uh, not be revoked, but instead um, be allowed to have the treatment. I know that the court, that, that the, the board only has 18 days for which to, uh, to, to get him that, that treatment. I assure you that our CSD is working, our uh, client services department will be working with him to get those, um, those resources and those treatments. Um, and, and, and we're actively working with, with Geisha. This is one of the few times where actually, because the charges have, have been refused, I have the opportunity to work with Geisha as well, because normally we're on the other, uh, we're on opposite sides. So um, our office is, is full steam ahead with this. Um, and we, we do hope that um, the board would allow Mr. Piper to uh, take advantage of those, those few weeks early so that he can um, get back to his, his, his daughter. And, and, and Miss, <laughs> Miss Sheldon was, was talking, she was talking how anxious she is getting back because apparently Rashad is a big help at home whenever, whenever he's there. Uh, they have a big dog and he takes care of the dog. He's able to wrangle uh, uh, their dog and, and, and keep him, uh, um, you know, at bay. Now that, now that Serenity's around, Miss um, Sheldon's hands are, are full and hopefully Mr. Piper can, can be there to help him out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stadlander. Appreciate your comments. Is the panel ready to vote? Uh, yeah. Ms. Jackson? Uh, Mr. Piper, my vote is going to be to do not revoke because of the proximity to full term date. Uh, you've been incarcerated now for uh, about seven months. Can you repeat and that, ma'am? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I said my vote is not to revoke you because of your um, full term date is in 18 days. There really aren't any services that can be provided for you in 18 days, and you've already been incarcerated for uh, seven months. So my vote is to do not revoke. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. Piper, I, I concur to do not revoke and return you to supervision. And I want you to cooperate with your attorney's client services. Yes, ma'am. Then we're going to offer to both of y'all, but, but for you, cooperate with it. Yes. Which, and congratulations on being a dad. You heard the Thank news, you. Right? Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Mr. you. I have two votes not to revoke. My, my vote, likewise, would be not to revoke. I would strongly encourage you to follow up uh, with Mr. Statlander's uh, uh, services uh, program at the Public Defender's mm -hmm. Office because it can only help you to be a better person and a better father. So congratulations on your uh, new fatherhood and good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Powell, too. I'll come see you this afternoon, Rashad. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that I heard him say that he's, uh, that his, his baby is due any day, maybe today. And then the attorney brings up that the baby's been around for about two weeks. So maybe he's given the benefit of the doubt. He's just nervous. I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that that's what I heard. And this is another bizarre hearing in the sense that he's like Miss Jackson emphasized like two times at the beginning, maybe three. Like you're 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 due to get out in in like two weeks. Why are we having this parole hearing? Why is an attorney here? Why? And, you know, it's, the reason why you might, well, you, you can argue, look, everyone wants to, no one wants to spend one day longer than they have to in jail. But I think that there are certain people that would opt not to have a, a parole hearing because you might have stipulations put on you that you don't want. You know, the board didn't do it, but they could have said, well, you're going to have to attend this program and you'll have to do this and you'll have to go to AA and NA for, for 90 straight days. Uh, so, you know, they didn't do that to him, but that, that is the risk of having a parole hearing uh, when you're 
do to get out anyways. Now, we do, um, <laughs> certain things to unpack here. We do have information on the crime that he is initially in for, and it was a horrible crime. And the judge took it real easy on him. We'll go over that. But it does seem to me like, you know, at, at a certain point, you gotta, you gotta, you're gonna have to lay, you're gonna have to, it, it almost felt like he felt, you know, just hearing him talk about how he had the job for two weeks and, 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 and why he quit. And then there's organization that was supposed to pay his dues, but he never got in touch with them. And, how he has the you know the the assistance of the attorney and it's like all these things where people are trying to help you but you're not taking accountability you're just not actually taking responsibility for yourself and he's still out so you know maybe he has figured things out but um i don't think they would have paroled him if he wasn't uh due to to, to get out anyways but um you know <laughs> something it stuck out to me his attorney said i'm married to my wife for six years and we never fight and i'm like i'm just okay man you're you're lying <laughs> everyone fights um that's just what marriage is uh maybe he meant physically fight but i don't think so um and then, and then he says uh and if if i was uh in that small house we'd be fighting too and um i don't know if he felt like oops maybe i put my foot in my mouth because uh, it was there any proof that he, she had moved because now they have a baby into the equation and man, if, if you thought it was hard before, you're going to have a wake up call now. Uh, but so the, the crimes that he was initially in for it, it was, it was, it was a, a brutal crime in the sense that, um, a man almost died. Right. And, um, it was, uh, there are two tourists, there are tourists from, on a convention from uh, uh, part of the government, like uh, associate, part of the government, I, I'll almost go through it soon, but they were beaten um, real bad. And let's see where it is. Here it is. This is what I meant to share. Thank you, Richard, for, so they actually had it on camera, of course. So they just jumped them. They, uh, choked them and knocked them both unconscious. Now they're 20, 18. So they're, you know, 21 and 18 years old. Um, they're arrested early this week. We discovered two bags of powdery white substance in the packet. Um, and man, they were lucky they didn't die because he was left in critical condition. The tourists identified as James Kern and Tim were visiting the city from Boston when the foreman ambushed them from behind. Um, they were attending the General Assemb Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association that weekend. Whatever that is, I have no idea. Um, surveillance videos show Paul punching him in the head, placing him in a chokehold. Brian was hit in the back of the head and collapsed to the ground, hitting his face. He attacked his rummage through their pockets before leaving the scene. Um, and some of you may have known this about me, but I had been jumped before. Uh, I have been I have been um, attempted to be mugged. So once I was, uh, this was a cool story actually. But but two, I was alone. It was like five in the morning in in a city, and I was walking uh, home, and two guys came to to mug me, and the idiot that I am because there's nothing short of being an idiot. Um, I actually said, I'm going to count to three, and if you don't leave you're going to regret it. And I had no idea what I was going to do. And they're standing away from me. And I said, one, two. And at that moment, a miracle, <laughs> a, 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 a police van, a van drove right down in front of me. And I waved at that van and the doors opened up and they popped out. It was cars and cops in the van. Must have been five cops popped out and they pulled their guns up and had those two guys against the wall. That was one time me being blessed. Um, another time I wasn't so lucky. I, I was just kind of like these guys. I was just walking and I was jumped and I woke up in a hospital. I mean, it was that, that I have no idea 
Um, and I was hurt. I was hurt bad. Uh, my parents came to the hall. They thought that I was dead, they said. Um, but OK, so I don't feel I don't feel remorse for people who do this. But so two Unitarian uh, Universalist Association employees were robbed in a violent attack. Maybe they weren't. I don't know what that is. Um, and then violent attack in New Orleans on Saturday evening on June 24th as they walked to their hotel during the UUA General Assembly. One remained hospitalized in critical condition. So um, one was released. One was released with a fractured nose and and other milder injuries. But days after the attack, uh, Tim remains hospitalized with acute brain injury. According to New Orleans Police Superintendent, UUA officials say. UUA officials, uh, where was I? Um, Brian condition is slowly improving. President Susan Frederick, blah, blah, blah. They're cautiously optimistic about the prognosis of his recovery. Um, Brian, our members of the UUA's information technology staff group, and we're working as part of the team that broadcast General Assembly events to support the offsite delegates. I mean, basically, this was, this was, uh, you know, there's always crime in Louisiana, but this was a high profile crime. The wrong people uh, were attacked this time. And it was egg on the face of Louisiana, so to speak, right? And it was filmed. Um, the brutality of the robbery of the four men left Brian motionless on the sidewalk in a pool of blood. New Orleans police said June 28th, all four suspects are in custody and charged with second degree robbery. Two of the suspects uh, turned themselves in, and three have been a, a shelter for young adult risks residents. At, okay. The robbery took place at the edge of French Quarter. Um, Patrick Gray informed General Assembly about the attack on the start Sunday morning worship services, June 25th, the audible gasps. She invited the worshipers to around the world to hold Brian and Corinne in prayer. Um, now, the sentences that they got for this, again, they were really handed uh, a tap on the wrist, if you want to call it even that. This is what they got. So 15 years in DOC, but seven years suspended, five years active probation. It's not tapping the rest. I guess it's eight year. It's an eight year sentence. This is 15 years, 10 years suspended, five years active. This is a five year sentence. That's our friend right there. And then 15 years, 10 years suspended, five years active. And then this is three years, just straight up three years, DOC custody. So that's what he's in for. He also is a charge that Richard pointed out, but it doesn't seem a conviction of um, molestation of a juvenile. So, and he has quite a long record. There's more information on it. So he's he's been in trouble for a very long time. Um, and you know, it's nice to see all the programs out there that people are trying to help him. But at a certain point, you, you, I guess you just have to grow up or you're going to keep finding yourself in, in trouble. Uh, but he has been out. We haven't seen him again yet, and I hope that we don't. With that, I'll let you go.